everyone uh, before we continue this program I would like to listen this worship song about the Holy Spirit heaven in the mighty name of Jesus your mighty your son I ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and mind and please give us the power of your anointing and touch the heart of your people who listen to your word and give us the understanding of your message for this moment Thank you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Amen. Good day to all members of Ambassadors of Fire. Dr. K. Erica Moore, Ambassadors of Fire founder and president. Reverend Dr. Arlene Bignay. Ambassadors of Fire Philippines, Charlie the Evangelist, Pastor Ephraim Mundano, 
Ambassadors of Fire Philippines host Ambassadors of Fire America Ambassadors of Fire Africa Ambassadors of Fire Middle East Ambassadors of Fire Europe and Asia Greetings from the Philippines But before I continue my message Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Reverend Leia De Neros, ordained community chaplain. At the same time, I am the residence pastor at OBCI GME Philippines. Our topic for tonight is about the power of the Holy Spirit that we found in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let us read. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the aim of the earth. And our introduction for tonight is about the book of Acts. Pentecost conversation of Paul was written C 33 and 34. Paul missionary's journey AD 46 to 57. Peter and Paul martyred in Rome in CAD 64 to 67. The author of the Acts, the book of Acts, is Luke, a physician, in AD 62. The theme of this book is the Holy Spirit empowered believers to declare the gospel among both Jews and Gentiles. In doing to establish the church, the church is the fulfillment of God's promises from the beginning of time. The purpose is Locke's purpose for writing his gospel, see Luke chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. To give an orderly account of the early church after Christ's resurrection, dedicating the two volume work to Theopilus. Locke wanted him to have certainty about what had been told. Hit him. Acts tells us the witness of the early church to the truth of the gospel. Then first introduced in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The witness is worldwide, Judea, Samaria, the end of the earth. This verse states the key theme of Acts, it begins with the spirit empowering of witness to Jesus. Then it provides a road outline of the book. First, in Jerusalem, chapter 1 to chapter 7. Second, in Judea and Samaria, in chapter 8 to 
chapter 12. And the third, the end of the world. The, or the end of the earth. In chapter 13 to chapter 28. You will receive power in court. So, the Holy Spirit will bring effectiveness in witness and ministries in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. And now, we have a three important message of this verses. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8. What is this? First, the message is victory over sin. Look at the Galatians. We read the Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I know, live in the flesh, I live faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gives himself for me. We have overcome our sin because God loves me. And second, Victory over Satan. Look at the Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse twelve. The Bible says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds." So we are. We have the divine power to destroy strongholds. And look at the first John chapter 4 verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who, he, who is in the world. Number 3. Gift of ministry. So, three messages. I will give you a three messages about the Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I repeat, one, victory over Satan. And a uh, one, victory over sin. Two, victory over Satan. And number three, gift of the Holy Spirit. We found this verse is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as a good steward of God's varied grace. The word power, this is my conclusion. The word power occurs at least seven times times in acts to describe the working of miracles alongside gospel proclamation and now look at the acts chapter 2 verse 22 men of israel hear this word jesus of nazareth a man attested by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did to him in your might as your yourselves as yours yourselves know. That is the message of the Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your word that you have given to us. Thank you because we have a victory over sin. We have a victory over Satan. 
and thank you for your gift for the ministry. Bless us, O Lord, to everyone that listen to your word. And thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Again, God bless us all the ministers of ambassadors of fire all over the world.